Hi guys, it's me, it's me, it's MPD. And it's time to run the shadows. Yes, all the background fluff is done. We're gonna go into a mission. Um, uh, yeah, this one. Load. I'm not reading this again, guys. I'm not gonna do it. Alright, what basically happened is I was going to film one of the missions. I didn't quite... I died a few times. I didn't quite think I had the gear and the... Uh, I definitely hadn't equipped enough before I went in with like first aid and stuff. So I've reverted to a previous save. I got some uh, more some more med gear. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one of the other missions first. And save uh, the... going to... The Wuxing Sky Tower till last, because that that mission was kicking like kicking my balls in. So, save scrubbing, save scrubbing for the win. So here we are. I've got the I've got my medical stuff. We get on the train. And let's see. Let's go with this one. This was the first mission. That it offered me, so I'm assuming this is gonna be the easiest. Gobbit, Duncan, and Raptor. Let's go. Confirm. Outsider. One poor garden, a carnival of chrome and neon, rife with every manner of technology and artif artifice. One can artifice. Artifice one can imagine. The entire area has the feel of a night market, save the chips are sold in lieu of steamed buns, and vendors hawk the lightest drones rather than folk art. Something stalks these streets, hiding just out of sight. It stalks the Wampoa elders, the leaders of the band of tech-savvy squatters that have claimed this neighbourhood as their own. The streets smell of ozone and fear, and those Wampoans passing the MTR station have haunted, furtive looks in their eyes. While well, the killer has struck only at one elder thus far, it may only be a matter of time before ordinary residents are menaced as well. Okay. Team. Um. I give woo one of these. Confirm. And I have two because I am more important than the other guys. The streets of the Wampo Garden slip with rain. Glittering under the neon glow of the myriad of signs and holographic displays. The sky reflects the same glow, painting the white apartment blocks the sickly orange of sodium streetlights. The smell of grilling meats mingles with others, rare scents, ozone, engine oil, and high tech fabrication facilities. Despite the hour, there are plenty of people out and about. You can hear the call of street vendors and touts urging people into their stores. Welcome to the wonderful world of Wampoa. Seriously, that's what they call the boat. Mall, whatever. Well, that is a unique gimmick. Say what you will about it, at least you'll never forget it. That's going to count for something, right? When the economy tanked after the crash of 29, the techno fetish, fetishist tribes started squatting in it. They've been here ever since. You know what? No use standing around here in the rain then. Come on, let's go see what the elders have to say. But he's not dead, he's just been cut up. Nice boat. Elder Nug. Hello Nug. This old woman is festooned with small circuits, tiny trid screens and speakers. The trid screens display snippets of trid broadcasts from every corner of the world. Tiny speakers play counterpoint with a cesarous voice speaking spethereal Punjabi, Kazakh, and other languages. Spetherial is the elven language, it's awesome. Her expression is haggard, and she fidgets with her fingers as you approach. Welcome, welcome to the Wampo, my friend. I'm Elder Nug, and these are Elders Tang and Ip. Thank you so much for answering our request for help, and nowhere else to turn. As long as you can pay, I can help. Under tang skin, glowing tattoos writhe and chain shape. Tigers become cranes and move on to dragons. We're under threat one by one. We elders are being hunted down by some monster. 
As you may have noticed when you arrived, there's been another killing just tonight. It crosses his solid chrome arms, holographic readout stunts constantly over their surface, displaying diagnostic information about their state, operating temperature, servo pressure and a variety of other minutia. He has been bearing of someone who could handle himself in a fight. I'm certain you have some questions, ask, and we'll do our best to tell you what we know. Made any enemies lately? Not that I can think of. We keep to ourselves. We buy and sell technology. We're not mercenaries or criminals. We're merchants and deckers. And it, even if someone were cheated in a deal, this kind of response is unthinkable. Whatever did, whatever did this, it isn't human. The violence and savagery is monster, that's what it is. Plenty of metahumans are monsters too, Nug. Just because it's horrible doesn't mean it's supernatural. What can you tell me about the murders? Started two weeks ago. The first go was gone. We found him in his apartment, eviscerated. He'd been torn apart, his head had been ripped completely off and most of his skin flied away. There's so much blood it took us weeks to clean out his apartment. The rest have been the same. Always at night, always dismembered. Each scene is like a nightmare and every time nobody hears anything. It's like a ghost. Tong, what happened to Tong? The same thing happened to the rest of the victims. Visceration and dismemberment. Sent a guard to keep people out of the shop, but he'll let you in. When did he die? Sometime earlier tonight, he locked up his shop, but Ip stepped, stopped by to ask him about some skill chips and he had. The door was unlocked and inside. Inside looked like a bad horror sim, just like all the other murders. It had something to do... It had to have happened after sundown, because I saw his shop was open when I was on my way to get some noodles for dinner. Why didn't you call the police? Hong Kong police force isn't welcome here. They've tried to force us out several times before or come hunting for someone to pin a crime on. We do a lot of favours for local gangs and triads, handle their major security, fix up their gear, make sure that they have access to Hong Kong Shadowlands Hub. We're too valuable a resource for them to lose, so they protect us when the HKPF or anyone else decides we're an easy target. They handle our physical security and we make sure to send the messages via the Matrix. Last time the HKPF made trouble, we started airing the Assistant Chief's dirty laundry over the tread. They got the picture and backed off. And what do you guys do? I'm the Invoker of Sprites. I commune with the sprites, the spirits of machines and ask them for blessings and pass those blessings on to people here. I heal the sick and ensure the Feng Shui of our habitat is good as can be, given our confines. I'm the first in glorious servo. I study patterns of repair machinery and teach others how to attune themselves to the wonders of automaton... automaton those things. Automation. The blessed autofab is my shop and purview, where we make the drones we use in Seoul. Really? What a fascinating and spiritual spin on things. I'd be interested in hearing more about your philosophy once we've done the job. I think I may find your perspective to be very interesting. As for me, I serve as a resplendent voltage spike. That means I shoot people who try to screw with us. It's a fancy title for head of security. Okay. Might be wise to ask the residents of Wampo Garden if they've seen or heard anything after you've gone to Tang Century Carnival. They may have seen or heard things we have not. Okay, sweet. Um. That drone is so fucking badass. Shadow Runners! Poor Lama, your service elders told me that you'd be coming. They tell you. Do you got killed earlier tonight, yeah? You killed her, that's rich. Killed is when a BTL head sticks a knife in you for your cred sticks, or cops put two in your chest for not kissing up hard enough. This is something else entirely. This isn't killed, this is slaughtered like a fastened calf. Watch yourself, it's a goddamn mess in there. Goddamn mess. Let's go. Tong Century Carnival looks like a scene of a B-grade slasher sim. The cloying scent of incense hangs thick and pungent in the air, emanating from the small shrine in the corner of the shop. Unfortunately, it does not cover up the reek of death in clotted blood. Despite the ragged remains of the elder Tong glittering the floor, the rest of the shop appears to be in good order, at least at first glance. Nothing is broken, tipped over or otherwise ransacked. As you step further into the room, you glance at the ceiling and walls. Blood from Tong's body isn't just confined to where his remains lie. Drying blood is splattered about the walls and ceilings as well. Yes. Tong's body is a ruined mess. 
the destroyed ruin of his face is barely recognisable, and what is left of his body would best be described as savaged. Like Wallace Renault. All of his limbs have been torn off, and a pile of flayed skin lies next to the remnants of the Wampo and Alder. The Wampo's clothing have all but been reduced to rags and tissues by cuts and tears, apparently sustained during the flaying. At this point, the only thing holding what's left of his body into a semblance of human form is the hair-thin fibre optics of his cyberware. Sweet heaven, underdog. I haven't seen anything like this since Auntie Wong tried to stash some crest sticks in a devil's rat's nest. It takes a lot to turn my stomach, but we'll, we'll, we shall have a winner today. Seriously messed up. I second that. This is murder. This is more like, I don't know, a feeding frenzy. If, I weren't for the, if it weren't for the skin, I'd say Tong stepped on a goddamn mine or something. I sense that body. You're the boss, boss. Man, this is going to be unpleasant. There's no fear here, underdog. No anger either. Just kind of satisfied feeling. Tong never saw it coming. Whoever did it was professional about it, which is pretty odd. Because nobody's professional about this right and body, as far as I know. It wasn't an animal attack. I don't know why the killer was after Tong, but it definitely wasn't any type of mindless creature or even someone particularly passionate. Somebody who planned this and executed it and was glad about it. I don't know, it kind of feels like it was just business as usual. Right, to check that shit out. Curious. No subdermal bruising where the skin's been removed. No sign of struggle. Coagulation of the blood and livid lividity marks at time of death between two and four hours ago. The knife marks are methodical. The killer doesn't seem to have been interested in preserving the skin as any kind of hole. It was, rem it was removed a bit like one fillet of fish. The path of least resistance. Some of the strips of skin have more ragged edges than others. The ragged edge looks consistent with a claw rather than a blade. His neck has been severed between the fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. Scoring across the bone indicates a bladed weapon, and a sharp one at that does match any other of the wounds. If I had to guess, I'd say it was killing blow to the back of the neck, if nothing else was subsequent damage. Why would someone kill him and then skin him? Honestly, I have no idea. Perhaps whatever did the rest of the damage was secondary, an action of opportunity or the like. Without further information, I'm not comfortable guessing. I've got no idea. Bloody walls. The walls are covered in splattered and smeared blood, most of which is hardened into a crusty, congealed paste. Thick tracks of it run like laterally. It looks like the blood has been deliberately smeared. Hey, d underdog? I don't know a whole lot about science or all that, but I know blood looks like when it hits a wall. This is natural. Somebody deliberately smear balls all over these walls. Let's see how it looks like. It, see how it looks like it's got paint trails? That's because somebody used Hong's parts like a brush. Why did they do that? Do I look like a psycho psychologist to you? Maybe because they're a freak. Maybe they're one of those sick serial killers who sees murders as art. I got no clue. All I know is what normal blood looks like on a wall, and this ain't it. Hey, you, you think that's strange? You ought to see this kind of sims that are coming out of Kotaka these days. They look like poly POV tech, and then you collapse all the carrier signals into one POV. You're like four people at once. And the underground gigs do bl blank jobs, you know, where they kill one of your POVs. Sick stuff. Okay. What's back here? Desk safe. Tongue's drawers are open, the safe built inside been open, there's no sign of tampering, and the green light next to the word unlock is blinking. Whoever opened the safe did it with a key fob. Looks like someone looted his stash. A guy like this wouldn't keep only empty cred sticks in his safe. What's in the bathroom? Debug the system. I'm not going to read this. I oh know the glitter is BTLs. Goddamn BTL. BTL uh, stands for better than life. It's sort of like they're like cyber drugs, for lack of a better term. Hello, Zippy. Hello, Zippy. Hey, strange, and I see Zippy toe tag at your service. Are you liking Wampo Garden? I'm underdog. Nice to meet you, Zippy. Nice to meet you too. Listen, I know it's a little forward of me just to say hello and whatnot, but I'm interested in giving you a hand if I can. This is my home, at least for the time being, and I'd like to stop these killings. Bye, mate. You've, 
We've never met before, but I know exactly who you are. You're my replacement. The elders had me autopsy what was left of Elder Gan and Elder Nakamura after they got ripped apart. I didn't want to dig any deeper. So since I don't know you and I can smell a shadow runner a mile away, you've got to be the outside of their ass to stop the killing, right? That's very astute. See, I have good eyes, a lot of good eyes actually, if you're in the market for replacements. Only slightly used and only come from certified donors, I swear. Man, <laughs> I kill myself. Make another joke like that, maybe I'll kill you first. Okay, okay, I get the message. No more bad jokes. I know I'm not, I'm no, I'm no comedian. I'm the one of the only trained surgeons around here. Keep the other one pones healthy. You've got to practice down the road. Blind Shen's a pretty good cyber doc, but he's basically an import special, implant specialist, and that's it. do not seem much like a doctor, mate. I did my residency back in UCAS. Could have been a real MD too. Things hadn't gone south with, from uh, unrelated reasons. I also deck a little, but I'm better at slicing skin than I see. Of ice, rather. Blumpo Garden seemed a good fit for me. For the most part, other than these killings, we don't have much by way of our problems. We do information security for triads. It makes us fairly impervious to anyone who wants to start trouble. Anyone starts something, we'll hit them in the matrix with our triad friends hitting them in the meat space. Some small gangs have tried pushing in here before, but they back off when they figured out they weren't just picking a fight with Tang and his guys, but both the Red Dragon and Yellow Lotus. They got the message real quick, what was left of them. Tell me about what do you want to know about the gardens. What kind of blade? Was it a knife, a sword, maybe an axe? I don't know, but it was stuck to the back of the neck. I don't like that at all. This whole affair's got me on edge. People dying is nothing new but flight skin. Ugh. It sounds possible that whoever's been killing the elders is trying to muddy the waters with all the blood and gore business. This is crime of an intelligent, careful killer. Be careful. The investigation might take you to some place somewhere very unpleasant. What are your thoughts on the murder? Pretty gruesome business. Gand over from a broken neck. Looked like someone had wrenched it around and his arms and legs were cut off. Some, flies, some skin flied away too. Nakamura had his throat ripped out by someone with pretty sharp teeth. At first I thought it was a devil rat, but teeth marks were all from something from a humanoid jaw. I didn't look at yesterday. From what I saw at a distance, it was the same story. Didn't see much point since I'd seen it twice already. As for Tong, from what the port told me, it was Gan and Nakurol again. You take a look at him. Yeah, it's the same. Oh, oh, damn, I like Tong. The BTL business is his own savory, but the man had to eat. And his regular sims were good. Generally all around nice guy. Friendly with everyone. Ne never anyone mad at him. There's no justice, let me tell you. See you later, Zippy. Oh, it is this way. Running round. Running around the place. That dude looks cool. Let's talk to this dude first. Can you believe this? I got four bootlegs of Eklan 60. The unreleased stack. Oh. Brazzaville. Hey man, don't get down on Eklan 60. I saw them they, when they played the unlicensed show at the old Coco Tart factory in Swen 1. The show was amazing, even if the police had to break it up midway through the second set. The show might have been great, but come on, Eklon 60's old news. They're already being mainstreamed. I saw a trade ad for the new Mitsubishi Ostro Scooter. They were using Mainvolt Underbus as their backing music. Made me sad, I tell you. Moj, I can't say his name, at your service. Decker, technolog technologist and music fan. You're not from around here. You don't hold yourself like a native. I'm from the UCAS. I thought so, we're bringing you out here. I'm trying to figure out who's killing the elders. Oh, that's a nasty business. I heard Dong died tonight. I don't know who or what pissed off. They're pissed off, but it seems like a really bad scene. I'm trying to keep my nose out of it still. I like this place. Is there anything I can do to help? Know anything about the murders? I'm trying to stay as far away from that as possible. I'm not connected enough to hear anything important. All the talk about monsters is just plain dark. I'm not afraid of monsters, but I don't want to get their attention. All I know is a couple of months ago we had elders Nakamura. Yatunde, Gan, and Magpie, and now we don't. Magpie? I've never heard of Magpie. Well, Magpie may not be related. She disappeared a month or so ago, just up and closed the shop one night. Nobody ever found her from her again. Zippy thinks she's on vacation, but I don't know. These killings start right after she disappeared, so maybe she's in hiding and she's taking care of the other elders one by one. 
why would she do that? To be blunt, she's a hateful, shrewish, old badger of a person. It was always her way or the highway. She butt heads with the other elders over damn near anything. Last fight she saw was when Tango was, was with Tango over something or other. I guess she ended up throwing some of his micro drones into a deep fryer and threatened to kick his ass around the block. What was her line of business? Matrix gear. The shop's called the Jack Point. Not very imaginative, I know. She's always had the hottest programs, best chips, and made some of the killer decks for anyone willing to pay her rights. It costs plenty of new yen, but she has one of the best in business, at least in Hong Kong. If you want to know more about her, you should talk to Zippy. He's one of the only people around here who got along with Mapai. You can probably find him at the MTR station. He loves the steam bun cart over there. See you later, Mo. I'll talk to this dude. Talk to me. Break a hui. Ho there. You're like a woman who understands the value of self-defense. Break a hui at your service and I can promise you I can help you defend yourself. What do you say? Want to take a look? Show me what you got. Guns. Guns I can't afford. Looking for information. Yeah? Tell me what you want. Maybe I can help you out. Know anything about the murders? Just that the elders have been hacked apart. I've tried to stay away from it. No sense painting the crosshairs on my own forehead, right? I'm nobody important and I aim to keep it that way. Okay. Apart from Tonk, who slings BTLs around here? The Red Spear Gang. They run up to here sometimes, but they don't cause any trouble. Check out the parking garage south of here, though. They usually hold up there. Step polite, though. If they don't know you and you cop an attitude, they'll put you in the ground. Funny thing. I heard there was a shootout with some Hong Kong police in a garage a, few, a month ago. I was away in Beijing at the time, so I didn't see it directly, but everyone was talking about it when I got back. And why is it funny? Because we don't let the HKPF in here most times. We shoot, them at, we shoot at them if they try. Every time they come in here, it's bad for us because they're always looking for a scapegoat. Where would the elders let them in? No one knows. Okay, curious. Bet this magpie character has something to do with that. Keto! Talk to me, Keto. Fishballs on, I think. Psh, what's wrong with you? You don't like anything good. Stinky tofu, I can see, but curry fishballs are grease that makes the his engine turn. You want to feel like a local, don't you? Get some. Oh, I'll see you, Keto. Something the humans. Something those humans. That's far enough, laddie. This lot's our turf. If you're looking for a fix, you're welcome to trade. If you're not here for business, clear the hell out. If you try and wander around on our turf, we're going to have to air you out. So what do you say? You're looking for a little pick-me-up, a little nitro to give you some pep? Maybe you want some chips. Take that edge off. You want it? I got it. Some of these BTLs just sound look an awful lot like they came out of Tong's shop. Yeah, so what? Why do you care? So if you stole these from Tongs, maybe you saw something I can use in my investigation. Yeah, I, I guess that's fair. It's like this. Broken Thumb Yuan <laughs> was walking down the street and sees the guy going to Tongs joint night at closing time. Tall guy hunched over. Had this shit grey rain poncho draped over him. Now Yuan figured that was weird as hell, so he posts up and waits. He figures the guy will come out soon, because Tongs closing up shop. Nothing 15 whole minutes. Guy's coming. Guy comes out, hustles down the street with no one saying boo. I figured he was waiting for an ebb in the crowds. You can see his blood smeared on the door, though. So he goes to check it out. Inside, total carnage. But you know what? Tong's not going to have any use for his gear anymore. So to hell with it. You and Jack's a lot for us. Business, is it? Of course, business. You're damn right it is. That's all I know. The guy had to be the killer. Tall, grey round punch coat. Rain, a poncho, hunched over. What's the smart about how he came and went? What happened in the fight here? As far as I know, some police showed up looking for somebody. They got in here, all of them got killed. Whoever they were after, long gone by the time we showed up. Used to be a lot of one poems living here. They all cleared out, muttering about ghosts and shit like that. Heard anything else about the, the murders? Nothing much. 
I'll tell you what, though, I got a guy named Kang, and he was was down in the storm drone system last week. Something was moving down there, big, too, man-sized, but it wasn't speaking any language Kang understood. Kid beat feet back here as fast as he could. Dumbass dropped the storm drone key on the way out, though. You want to go looking for some... Th whatever it was, have to get a new key from somebody else. Kang stole this from the city worker. Who else might have a key? There's a guy named Port Lamb who's got keys to pretty much everything. He's somewhere in between a cop and a handyman. UN also mentioned some elf woman with crazy coloured hair who managed to scam a key. He said she hunted paracritters down there, devil rats and shit. Okay, peace. You are useless to me, sir. Who are you? Dominion. How do you know? You got the right kind of eyes. Look like you're looking for something. Don't seem to trust anyone. Outsiders don't generally wander around with power gone without an escort. Locals don't make them feel too welcome unless they've been invited. And there is only one reason to be inviting shadow runners out here. Call me Demergo. I'm not one of the one poems, but I've been here long enough that I, if they don't think twice about me being here. So what you found so far? You're awfully curious for a random guy. Professional curiosity. I used to be with New York Police Department as part of their Thermological Research Division, part of the CSI branch, ex except I did the magical investigation while the other guys pulled prints and checked blood samples. When I hear about shit like this happening, I keep my ears to the ground. Old habits, you know. Why aren't you invest? Elder Nook asked me to look into the killings after the first murder, and she couldn't afford my fee, though, so I took a pass. It's not just the money either. You see that stuff day after day, you pay a price. It eats away at you. You know what it's like to feel all the sickness and anger every day? To be asked to pick up a murder weapon and relive somebody's death? Feel it going into your neck? Pleading in the voice of a dead woman for a killer to spare you? Those days I'd rather interrogate the living, thanks. All things considered, could be useful. Sure, if you're appraising antiques or trying to find where a lost cat went. But turn that on murder scenes is an invitation of horrors beyond imagination. I can read objects, it's called psychometry. Psychometry? A little trick I managed to pick up. Don't really know how. I hold something, I can tell you what happened to it. Who owned it, how it killed someone. If someone loved it, or was afraid of it. Useful, but it'll tax your heart. Before you ask no, I'm not going to read anything you find. I already told no, whatever her name is, I didn't want any part of this. You want advice? I'll give you that but I'm not going to get drawn into this further than that. So aside from that, is there anything else I can help you with? Single strike, that's a precision attack. Most knife fights end up with a lot of shallow cuts and blood over the victim and attacker alike. Tongue was killed by a single strike. You definitely wouldn't have seen it coming, and you can bet your last new yen who have killed him is highly skilled with the blade. That says to me the attacker is either a professional hitman or a practice serial killer. Could be both two. Assassins don't tend to be most empathic. Empathetic of people. Was the attack a thrust or a cuss? It was a slash. Why? The wound was a thrust. Your attacker was using a knife or some kind. Anything of over about 10 inches would be pretty hard to thrust with that kind of angle. The next too high for a longer blade. If it's slash looking at a sword or a cleaver attack, both of those popular with triads, they make an awful mess and send a message that you're not to be trifled with. He was caught by surprise. That's not what I would have expected, but with the amount of mess that he'd seen, the victim should have left behind a hell of a lot of fear and pain, are you sure? Very sure. Tongue died tonight, so the astral signature hasn't had time to fade. There's only a sense of perfunctory accomplishment. Then it sounds like this wasn't a crime of passion. Planned attack would have that kind of resonance in my, in my experience. It's possible that the gore show is to throw off anyone looking for the actual reason. Yeah, if I wanted to kill someone and get away with it, I'd try and point a finger at some kind of monster. Basic Investigation 101, it's usually the simplest explanation, but don't discount other possibilities. I think the mess wasn't incidental. It's a possibility. Ask yourself, if the mutilation happened after Tong's death, why would a killer perform that kind of ritual? Serial killers who engage in that kind of ritual don't feel perfunctory about it, in my experience. It tends to feel more like they're taking communion. It's a religious or sexual feeling most of the time. If this didn't feel that way, I don't think the killer is actually pathological. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I have an idea who who the dude is, but... 
Tell me of Magpie. Tell me of her. Sure, what do you want to know? Where do you think she went? No idea. One day she was here, next, poof. At first I thought she was on vacation since she had mentioned wanting to see the kingdom of Hawaii someday. But it didn't feel right. She would have at least told me she was leaving. Seems mighty suspicious to me. Nobody else seems to care what happened to her. Probably because she pissed them all off so bad. So any place you think I should start looking? Might want to check out her shop. It's all locked up but the other elders have a spare key. Couldn't hurt to look around. And even though Magpie wasn't always butting the head with the other elders, they wouldn't have any reason not to let you in. What did I argue about? Magpie and the others never saw twi eye to eye. She was contrary for the sake of it. Most of the rest had a grand vision for what they wanted this neighbourhood to become. Magpie just wanted to deck. She was only an elder because they needed someone with her matrix chops. The last big argument was between her, Nug, Ip and Nakamura. It was over something relatively trivial. I think Nakamura wanted to expand the pirate trade business into the Matrix. She was just absolutely refused. That's exactly it. She gave Nakamura an earful, let me tell you. She said something about not wanting to use a valuable bandwidth for trivial entertainment bullshit. Anyway, it went from there into a rant about how she was going to let Tang explore her, his drone business any further, expand his drone business any further, because it would get too much Megacorp attention. They accused her of blocking them just because she could. Which is probably true. Lots of screaming. No wonder they were mad. Yeah, you're telling me. I like the old coot, but she was a handful at the best times. Everybody needs her matrix skills for their business to run properly. There are other deckers, me, say, or Mo, but she had the infrastructure. If their project didn't interest her, she wouldn't even give them the time of day. She's a real hard head about giving her time wasted, but she figures if she's not interested in something, it has no value or objectively. Kind of a major blind spot, if you ask me. Could you let me into a shop? No can do, not because I don't want to, but because I just don't have the key. Okay, see you, dude. You! Storm drain key, now! Give me the key now! Sure. Um, see you later, dude. I do want a key to... I do want to go to that shop. Why did you let the HKPF into one power garden last month? We generally don't let the police into one power garden, it's true, but this case we made an exception. The police were very polite enough to look the other way over some deals with the Loho Johan pirates. They also made it clear that if we refused, they might not take an interest in our deals with the pirates. They were calling special duties units and force their way in. We've repelled Hong Kong police force before when they tried to push us around. We could probably drive the special duties unit as well, but the cost and blood would be too high. Since they weren't hunting at one point, we saw no reason to refuse the request. What were they here for? They didn't say and we didn't ask. The HKPF isn't exactly forthcoming about business. And we found that the less we know about their interests, the safer one power garden is. When you take an interest in the police, they return the favour. As far as I know, they went into the parking garage where there was a gunfight and the police never came out. More showed up a few hours later looking for their missing officers. We didn't let those in though. We just deliver what was left of their bodies to them. We were willing to allow the group of four in because they asked politely. When the reinforcements arrived there were over 30 of them. We couldn't risk the rest of the police setting up camp in our streets. It would have been a circus and disrupted our lives and business. Why didn't you tell me about Elder Magpie's disappearance? Why would we? He, her departure from the Wampo isn't related to your investigation. It happened before the killings began. It's certain she's just sulking somewhere. No doubt she'll come waltzing back the next month, all full of attitude that life dead's gone without asking her permission. If she does, we'll welcome her back. Despite her problems with her behaviour, her skills make her extremely valuable. I'm taking over maintenance of our matrix infrastructure in her absence, but I'm nowhere near her level. The best I can do is ensure nothing breaks down until she returns. Pardon me. Give me a key. Yes, there's lots of sensitive equipment in there, including our community servers. We don't let anyone who's not one of the Wampo and Elders in there. Why would you need to go have a look around? Sweet. I'll be going now. Let's go to that shop and then go to the storm drains and then find what I believe to be a feral ghoul. 
with a samurai sword because he's one of the NPCs that have been listed in the game. Get him to join my party. Much sweet. There's the storm drain. Let's go steal some shit. Run the shop. That's what I really want to do. Go in in the jack point. Display case. And search through the bin. I'm a tough nut, Zacker. Hey, awesome. I didn't think anyone but me liked Honest Wang's noodles. Flavour like that, you've never promised it. Tasted in a package of instant noodles, I promise. See? This one's cheesy curry broccoli. I don't know why it never caught on, honestly. Gee. Who could pass up the delicious taste of cheese, curry, and freeze dried vegetables? I know, right? People out there have no idea what kind of culinary delights they're missing. Mr. Yang, Mrs. Yang's restaurant. Ah, oh, the pl uh, secret lock box, the latch and lock torn out, uh, and all the keys to wife's treasure trove missing. Who do you suppose stole them? I don't think so. The one phones are technologically adept, and the lock box mag lock was probably of the cheapest quality. It wouldn't resist. Pr it wouldn't present much difficulty for an elder. And why would someone leave the lock box here? They could simply have taken it with them on to work at their leisure. Okay. The plot. Anything in the back room? Bag room. Shit, maybe my quiet didn't take a trip after all. That amount of blood, I'm guessing someone killed her quietly and then drained her body in the bath. Make it cleaner to relocate. That's a careful plan. Thinking there's a lot more going on around these murders than we initially told. First, I don't even mention my quiet to us. Then it looks like she's been killed. Something's not right, underdog. Let's not mention this to the elders. If they're hiding anything, they might start cleaning up their tracks better. Interesting. Ah, uh, to the storm drain. Pile of bodies. Seen plenty of disgusting stuff in my, day, in my day, but this takes a Look at it. Somebody stacked these parts up like they were making a lottery or something. Hello? Serial killer. The arm belonged to a vor. Those are criminal tattoos. The lighthouse shows that he tried to escape from prison or planned to. The words say all police are dogs. Skull inside a square means he served prison term for robbery once. Uh, what's a vor? A vor is a thief. The vor... Visa Cone is the name of the organization. Thieves in law. They have strict codes and police are their, their own. They don't sever arms and but they don't sever arms and leave paths of gore. Sweet. Storm drain. I will take the necklace. As you round the corner, you hear voices speaking out loudly enough for you to make hearing sentences. Speakers are definitely not local. They speak with a slight Slavic accent. And their clothing is heavily armoured. Around them, there are a number of crates and boxes, all mostly filled. So that the group is packing up. Yaroslav says the boat will be ready tomorrow morning. He's got everything arranged with the port authority. We move the goods to his warehouse, and he'll handle loading them onto the ship, and we can get paid right there and then. I'd be glad to be done with this filthy place. I will too. I happen to hide in these damn drains. It stinks down here. Near the devil rats running down the walkways, it's a mess and it's disgraceful. 
we shouldn't have to put up with this bullshit. And Alexander isn't, still isn't back from his little trip. We'll have to leave him behind if he didn't get back soon. And no Galena. Until Andre says that we're clear from the tri triads. We can't be seen with the goods on the street. They find us here. We go back to Vladivostok in sausage casings. Those red dragon Mudokai don't screw around when it comes to protecting the turf. Who knows, maybe Alexander was stupid and they caught him. Either way, we'll have to lug this crap through the drains for a few clicks. Why are we here? A curious little pest come looking for what things that don't concern her. What do we do with pests, Galena? We break them, vassal, val whatever your name is, and then we hammer a spike through into their throats so anyone who sees their bodies knows not to meddle in our affairs. I suggest you stay where you are, pest. Fuck you. Oh shit, that's quite a lot of dudes. Uh. Okay, uh, Conjurer, Enforcer, Fire in the hole! Shit. Um, let's see.
up. Ah, uh, shit. Wait. Give me one of them aim shots. Wait. Check recent emails. Get ready to move. Uh, okay. Get ready to move. Okay, I got. Sure, there's something else down here. Okay, apparently there's not. So back up the stairs we go. <clears throat> what was this? Uh, what's this mission called? Outsider. Yeah, I'm not gonna eat that. Turns out it's people. Mementos, examine the mask. Examine the charms. Examine the paper fan. Leave the box alone. Shit. Got you! Aha! A hide gun! No doubt brought to bear against me by the Wampoan Elders, a means by which they can lift the curse plaguing them. I salute your tenacity, but I wonder, will you hear me out before raising your weapon skill me? You don't seem interested in eating me. Yes, I'm not only talking, I am reasoning as well. And since you have not attempted to kill me, 
Your own higher facilities are engaged. I'm a curiosity to you. You wish to know not only what I am, but what I've done. As for who, you may call me Gaichu. I know who you are. You're the one killing the Wampoan Elders. You are correct. I've killed all of the Wampoan Elders to date. Though only Magpie was according to my initial plan. I regret the deaths of the other Elders, but it was, it was necessary. What does Gaichu mean? Harmful insect. It's a name I've taken for myself since the word is usually applied to pests. Especially ones who drink blood such as leeches and mosquitoes. The first character means injury or evil influence, and the second means insect or worm. This affair began simply enough. As you may surmise, I am not someone who can be seen in public without great risk. Wampoan Garden is an excellent place to hide, no police or tribe presence, and minimal interest in things that lurk in the shadows. Unfortunately for me, Elder Nug discovered me through communion with her spirits. Rather than kill or chase me away, she came to me with a proposition. Nug and the other elders had problems with one of their number, an elder named Magpie who had been holding out their plans hostage. Would not budge. They could not remove Magpie, however, because their services were too useful to the Wampoans at large. Nug offered me payment to dispose of Magpie, and I accepted. Why the hell are you talking to this thing, underdog? It's a goddamn cool. You know what they're like. Really? What, pray tell? Am I like all teeth and claws and bad manners, I expect? Really? You want to crack jokes, you cannibal? You're the kind of monster that devour a family just because it's convenient. Remember the 162's underdog? He's just like them. 162's were a gang woo in the Barrens. Like that makes a bit of difference. Go on then, talk to the monster, but I'm keeping my finger on the goddamn trigger. I believe that you were speaking of the Elder's plans to have me kill Magpie, and surely you must be a little curious of that. You didn't clean up all the blood, I found some in her drain. Ah, unfortunate. I thought I was careful enough. Having it on my hands must have been obscured by my sense of smell enough that I missed the last remnants of the, in the drain. I disposed of Magpie's body by emptying the blood in her bathroom, then I cut her up into more possible pieces. Those were the placed in plastic tarp, which I took to the storm drains and hid. It's unfortunate, but my survival depends on the consumption of raw met human flesh. Letting such nourishment go to waste would be a foolish error. Why kill the other elders? I contacted the elders, not in person, of course. They arranged to exchange payment. I assume that since the job is done, no would be a woman of her worth. I was mistaken. I arranged at the nearby parking garage where the elders had told me about. They cleared out the other wampoons under some pretense, though I'm not sure what they, ruse they used. The elders never showed up. Instead, several members of the Hong Kong police force arrived. They were more heavily armed than usual, so I suspect they knew something of my nature. I heard about that fight. Of course. I've survived as a ghoul for some years now on the streets of Hong Kong. If this isn't evidence enough of my tenacity, I doubt any words I could say will change your mind. A betrayal of that sort cannot stand. Not only was I not paid for my time and effort, the Wampo and elders treat me like a common animal. And I am so much more than that. Reputation is everything, and I had none. I had hoped to build a network of contacts so that I would be able to continue finding work, but with that treachery my hopes were dashed. I decided to become the monster that they feared. One by one I have eliminated them. They know how to contact me. They could have ended their nightmare at any time by making amends. I would have asked for more money, but I would have ceased my hunts, yet they did not. Instead they contacted you, no doubt asking you to eliminate me where the police have failed. So I ask you, what now? What will you do? Will you attempt to finish the one poem started? Will you treat me with the same humanity I've shown you? I made my decision. Come work for me, I can be your face. A curious offer, and one of the elders, will you allow me the satisfaction of killing them? I want to see what they say first. Hmm. I could counsel you not believing their words, but you have made the sound of one who is wary as a matter of course. Very well. Let us wait a bit later in the night. Most of the pedestrians will be off the street, and it will be easy for us to approach Wampo without being noticed. Sounds like a plan. Sweet. Got me a ghoul samurai. Hello, elders. What are you doing? You brought this thing into our home? Quick, kill it before it kills us! Yeah, I have to say, this isn't a good idea. Where the hell is a ghoul in here, and why is it wearing armor? Calm yourselves, I'm not an it, and your elders know this intimately. Good evening, Zelda Nook. I can hear you, I can smell your fear. 
I'm glad of this. It means you're learning the price of betrayal. Whoa, whoa, what the hell is going on here? Can someone explain to me why this ghoul is talking? Cut you had a contract with the elders and they betrayed him. You dare to accuse us of conspiring with the monster and covering it up? You're insane. The very idea is preposterous. I'm interested to hear what kind of evidence you have to support this theory, underdog. As far as I can tell, the monster killed Tong and the others, and that made a threat that should be eliminated. You believe this vermin? This creature that feasts on met human flesh and kills and dismembers our tribesmen? You are a naive and foolish woman, if that's the case. What proof do you have that Magpie is dead? No, please, it matters... It matters where an elder is accusing of breaking our law. The other elders generally judge, judge them. It matters where all of them are being judged. I'm authorised to act as judge. Make your case, Shadow Runner. I found Magpie's necklace in the Storm Drains. That is definitely Magpie's. But if you found it in the Storm Drain, that's suspicious, but hardly proof on its own. Of course it's not proof. There's a number of things lost down in the Storm Drains in Hong Kong's mu must number in the tens of thousands per year. I'm certain that necklace isn't unique either. There was a large amount of blood in a shower drain. So what? Perhaps she cut herself and washed the cut off. Or perhaps you were mistaken about being blood. They're simply guessing at what happened. That's true, it's a guess, and even if it's her blood, that doesn't prove that the elders hired this ghoul to kill her. The elders have always protected Wampo and Garden to the best of their ability. She hasn't been seen in a month and not by anyone. She wouldn't just disappear like that. That may be unlikely, but it's hardly impossible. You haven't established that the elders were involved. All that you've done is make suppositions about it. What proof do you have that we hired and betrayed this creature? I won't sit by and listen to idle accusations without any kind of concrete evidence back it up. What about the fight with the Hong Kong police force? How do you mean? What does that have to do with the elders in the ghoul? You Wampoans don't allow police inside the area. Why make an exception this time? The police were polite and asked for our permission to enter. They were hunting a non Wampoan. That was a reason enough for us to allow them in. That doesn't add up, Nook. Why would you, the police ask for our entry now? They've never been polite before. They've always tried to force their way in here. It just doesn't ring true to me. Did you ask them to come to, in order to hunt down the school? Preposterous, Porter. You know what our community is like. We wouldn't lie over something like this. The ghoul has been lying the entire time, trying to cover his tracks. He's still brutally murdered several elders. That's true, those murders were vicious and cruel. I don't see any way to explain that away. The ghoul is a monster for now how he killed Tong and the others. Tong's body was a mess, true, but he died quickly from a sword blow to the neck. I struck Tong down with a single blow from my sword. The mess made the body was to send the elders a message that I had no desire to make Tong suffer at any time. No good and the elders could have made amends and the killings would have ended. Instead, they hired a shadow runner to kill me. It's not about cruelty, it's about sending a message. That's not what I would have expected looking at the body. You killed him before you dismembered him? That's right, and I killed the other elders in a similar fashion. There's no cause to prolong their suffering. The message was for the living elders, not the dead. If the elders wish to treat me like a monster, I will terrorise them like one until they pay reparations for their mistake. Come on, you can't possibly believe this crazy story. It's absolutely insane. He didn't even feel the blow. That's correct. I struck a single blow from the back it was to me. His death was instant. Regrettable that he had to die for your folly, you no, know, but necessary to protect my reputation. You cannot believe what these people say. They're not to be trusted, and even if this is true, he still killed Tong. Maybe so, Nog, but a monster will not take Tong's suffering into account. He may be a killer, but he's not heartless. Yeah, okay. I believe you, the blood smeared on the balls, the removal of the skin. That's a scene designed to invoke horror, not the actual scene of a natural not the scene of a natural fight. I'll just what do you say in response? This is a farce. We've dedicated ourselves to protecting the Wampo and tribe and everyone who lives in Wampo Garden. Do you really believe outsiders and monsters over our word? We who have only tried to end the killings? You've been duped, Porter. You and this shadow runner. I concur. Porter, you know me. You know the kind of person I am. Why would I be party to killing of another elder? I can't believe we're entertaining this notion that we've had to defend ourselves. We should be disposing of this school instead. If you think well, forget this, you're sorely mistaken. I will not tolerate this kind of insult.
The elders were all too happy to have the Red Spears move into the garage. That's right, Ip. You even told me not to find out what happened with the fight. You said the Red Spear gangers were moving in and to leave them alone. Why would you tell me not to look into it? If I was only protecting you from the Red Spears. They're dangerous. Which is why I wanted to deal with them directly. Magpie's gear was missing, obviously missing. Why didn't Ip tell me that? He would have had, he would have had to have noticed. Pure supposition. You think it proves something that I didn't notice equipment missing? Magpie's shop is always a horrible mess. Tank, you did a full inventory of Magpie's metric servers. You assured us everything was running fine and you wouldn't be able to continue your work. I find it hard to believe if you miss something as obvious as missing equipment, especially while searching a stock. Alright, I think I have an idea of what's going on here. And what do you believe the real story is? Glad you seem to be telling the truth. Hell, there's too many facts don't add up. You are obviously hiding something, possibly a great deal from the rest of the tribe. I'm sorry, but I have to take you into custody until the community can decide the extent and manner of your punishment. Death would seem appropriate to me, especially given that they kept up this shred, even to you, one of their most trusted citizens. Don't you dare talk to me like that, you disgusting beast. If no, don't make this worse than it is. Thank you, underdog. I'll make certain that justice is made out. You are free to go, and I will ensure payment is delivered to you. As long as you take Gaiju with you, I can't have him stand here. He'll be coming with me. Sweet. I confess I am unhappy with the decision to allow the Wampo and Elders to live. We should have killed them, if no other reason than to maintain our reputation. That's why I let them live. That's not how we do things. I can accept this. I am unused to working with shadow runners, and I assume you would see things as I do. Hopefully, there is much I can learn from you. Shall we leave this place? I'm eager to be done with my poor gardens. Under Doglu Sun! Sweet. Confirm. Back to Heo. Okay guys, I'm going to turn in this um, quest, then I'm going to call it there, so next episode we'll be reading Shadowrun, uh, Shadow Run, Shadowlands again, and then we shall uh, do the next mission, after of course we got paid for this one, and we'll do the, uh, that's what I'll probably do is do my shadow running, my Shadowlands and my talking to NPCs is a separate video, so it'll probably be um, Shadowlands Part 2. Shadowlands BBS Part 2, for example. And that way, if I, uh, as and when a side quest triggers, pardon me, goddamn, we'll be able to fit in that video as well. They, they usually don't take longer than 20 minutes for me to read everything. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.